from rosemary oil miracles to rice water rinses social media is full of bold claims about reversing hair loss but are these hacks real solutions or just wishful thinking let's find out i'm reacting to the internet's most viral hair loss diy hair product videos and breaking down what's actually backed by science and what's not Hi, I'm Dr. Mamina Terregano, a triple board certified dermatologist, internist, and dermatopathologist. I have treated thousands of patients over the last 16 years who deal with hair thinning, alopecia, scalp issues, and I know how emotional and frustrating hair loss can be as somebody who has also personally dealt with it over the last 20 years. In this video, we are reacting to everything from scalp oils and shower tips to hair transplants and alopecia TikToks. I will share what's evidence-based and what's potentially helpful and what might just be a waste of your time or worse, harmful. All right, so let's get started. So then, this is how much hair I lose in the shower. Let's see if this is a healthy amount. So I counted about 97 hairs and losing anywhere from 50 to 100 hairs per day is normal. Okay, first of all, don't panic. I love Amy Chang. She's awesome. She explains things really well. Hair shedding is normal. We lose anywhere from 50 to 100 hairs a day and sometimes even more during seasonal changes like spring or fall. Yes, seasonal shedding is a thing. It's totally natural. So here's what's actually happening. The hair grows in different cycles. There's the antigen phase, which is the hair growth phase. We love this phase. It lasts a while. It lasts several years, three years, give or take, depending on the person. Then we shift to catagen phase, which is sort of the hair is kind of converting into the resting phase. And this lasts a few weeks. And then there's the telogen phase, which is the resting phase. And these hairs are gonna shed no matter what, but they're gonna hang out for about three months. And then after that, there's the exogen phase where the hair is shedding. The hair is shed to make room for a new growth. So when you see strands coming out in the shower, it's usually just hair in the telogen, like exogen phase, actually just doing its thing. But when should you worry? So if you're seeing like handfuls of hair, noticing a widening in your center part, if you're noticing bald patches or shedding's been going on for a long time, longer than three to six months, then I think it's worth seeing a derma dermatologist. It could be something like chronic telogen effluvium, iron deficiency, thyroid imbalance, early signs of an autoimmune condition like alopecia areata, rarely lupus can show up as, as hair thinning. So the bottom line, shedding happens, it's normal, but if you notice like an extensive pattern, like extensive whitening of your part, if you're noticing a huge volume or if it's happening for an extended period of time, that's when you should definitely see a derm. All right, let's move on to the next video. Here's the other rosemary oil video. Okay, so I've seen this everywhere, rosemary oil for hair growth. And honestly, there actually is some science behind it. It's not super impressive though, okay? There was a study in 2015 that actually compared rosemary oil to 2% minoxidil and found that after six months of use, both groups had similar improvements in hair growth. The rosemary group even had less scalp itching. So rosemary oil is thought to work by improving the scalp circulation and reducing inflammation around your hair follicles. but let's be real it's not a miracle overnight fix okay you need consistent use obviously you know the study looked at six months so at least that long to, really you need consistent use to start seeing results this was a small study but the, another really big issue with the study is that it was comparing it to two percent minoxidil as a derm i never recommend two percent minoxidil most derms recommend five percent minoxidil so i mean i have a feeling that five percent minoxidil would outperform rosemary oil. If you are gonna use it, I would mix it, um, mix a few drops with like a carrier oil, whether it's jojoba or coconut oil, and massage it in. Bottom line is it's not hype for nothing. Just don't expect it to outdo prescriptions or even standard over-the-counter treatments like 5% minoxidil. And when it comes to anything related to hair loss, be patient. Okay, so let's move on to our next video.
Ah, uh, yes, rice water. This is, I would say, the OG DIY hair growth treatment hack. Um, it continues to go viral over and over again. So what's the deal with rice water? Well, rice water is rich in a variety of different interesting goodies, amino acids, different vitamins, B vitamins, a compound called inositol, which may help strengthen the hair shaft, reduce breakage. It's been used for centuries in some Asian cultures, and there is some logic to it, but there's also a catch, like while rice water might improve hair strength and shine, there's no solid clinical evidence that it actually boosts hair growth from the follicle. I mean, I can understand it being nourishing for the scalp skin um, and healthy skin provides fertile ground for healthy hair follicles. But yeah, we still don't, we still need more studies. Also, rice water can be fermented. I think fermented rice water theoretically is supposed to help your scalp microbiome, but there are cases where it could throw off your scalp microbiome. So that's just something to think about. I don't think it's for everyone. The bottom line is that it might help your hair look healthier, but it's not like a guaranteed growth treatment. I don't think it should replace your tried and true medical therapies that we know work. But if you're dealing with real hair loss, yeah, I wouldn't just bank everything on rice water. All right, next video. Okay, so what you just saw in this video is a series of Kenalog injections, which is a treatment that we use. It's a corticosteroid being injected into the scalp to treat alopecia areata. So alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition where we see the immune system essentially attacking the hair follicles, leading to sudden patchy hair loss, usually on, well, usually like in these brown little patches on the scalp. It can happen anywhere on the body though. And the steroid injections are really one of the first line treatments. It really helps calm the inflammation around the hair follicle, it can stop the immune attack and allow the hair follicles to reactivate and grow hair again. I think it's very effective, um, especially for people who have like small or medium sized patches, especially if you just have like one or two. If you do have alopecia areata, some topical treatments can help. Oftentimes I will prescribe like a topical steroid for patients to use in between their Kenalog injection sessions. You could also use Rogaine, you know, minoxidil to stimulate hair growth. If cases are really bad, then we could always do systemic steroids. Obviously that's not an ideal long-term solution. And then there's a new class of medicines called JAK inhibitors like baricitinib, which are now FDA approved for severe cases of alopecia areata. So alopecia areata, for the most part, I call it a happy disease because hair does typically grow back. Obviously in severe cases, um, Sometimes it just may not, but if you could just help your immune system a little bit, um, kind of calm down and not attack those hair follicles, it can be helpful. Also, there's like some very, there's some data, although not that robust, that can show, that shows that gluten can be effective. Um, sorry, not gluten. Abstaining from gluten can be effective for alopecia areata. And then there's also certain essential oils that can be effective. If you just Google essential oils for alopecia areata, there's a study from JAMA Dermatology. It's, it's old, it's like from the 90s. And it's a small study, but it looked at four specific essential oils that can be helpful. And I think that the essential oils also can help with stress relief. And I think stress is a huge part of alopecia areata. Okay, here's the next video. I love Sarah, but let's talk about what's actually backed by science when it comes to hair loss treatments. So yes, red light therapy or low level light therapy, neutrophil and even rosemary based shampoos have some supportive evidence and pumpkin seed oil may help due to its anti-androgen effects. But if you're dealing with real hair loss or hair shedding, hair thinning, especially from something like androgenetic alopecia or telogen effluvium, these, these nice little options may not cut it. There are prescription treatments that are tried and true, like topical or oral minoxidil. There's oral finasteride or detasteride for men or postmenopausal women. And there's also spironolactone for women. The topical minoxidil is affordable. It's FDA approved with decades of research behind it. 
And then let's look at this other video. Okay, so hair transplant is also an option for people with severe hair loss. His hair loss didn't seem that severe. I feel like very treatable with oral and topical meds. I don't know what his history is. Maybe he tried all of that stuff. But um, my concern with hair transplant is that if you are continuing to get hair loss and hair shedding, it's like the transplant's kind of going to waste because it's like you're losing hair around it. But anyways, transplant's an option that you can always do. For severe cases. In general, like I'm all about layering in supplements. I'm a big fan of supplements like the Viscal and Nutrafol. I'm a big fan of devices like the, the laser caps, helmets. I want people to know that there are medically proven treatments that are safe, they're accessible, and often more effective when they're used early. A lot of people think it's hard to get into a derm. There's so many like online services now that provide these medicines. So something I would look into. So when it comes to healthy hair and preventing hair loss, these are my three quick rules. So one, treat your scalp skin like actual skin, okay? You wanna cleanse it, you wanna protect it, you wanna nourish it. And like understand that your scalp has a skin barrier that also needs to be protected and maintained. Please don't skip on medical help. A lot of people get so frustrated by the hair loss and by the treatments out there, hair loss has many root causes and a medical professional can help you identify those causes and get you on effective treatment. And lifestyle does matter, stress, sleep, nutrition. We have actually plenty of studies to show how these play a role in hair loss. So yeah, things that seem like very common sense play a huge role with hair. All right, so yes, hair loss is incredibly common and incredibly nuanced. Actually, one ingredient or oil won't work for everyone because the cause of hair loss isn't the same for everyone. If you've been struggling, please talk to a dermatologist. There are real treatments out there. And if you enjoyed this kind of video, please hit like, send me your favorite or most questionable hair hacks. I love reacting to these with science backed information. Also, please share this video with any friends or family who you think are struggling with hair loss and are trying like crazy DIY hacks to help their hair instead of things that probably are gonna work better. Your support means a lot to me. And don't forget to check out my other videos on skin, scalp, and stress because it's all connected. See you in the next one.